Good morning. It's uh, <clears throat> wonderful to be with you. This is the seventh year I've had the pleasure to participate in this uh, event, and I want to thank Professor Charles Wang and all of his colleagues at Beijing Film Academy for annually working so hard to put this great event together. Today I want to talk a little bit about uh, the, where we see the future of advanced imaging uh, going. And first, I want to just say that we have chapters and members uh, throughout the world uh, who join with you in working hard to really uh, create the next generation of consumer experiences. When we discuss advanced imaging, we talk about 3D movies and high dynamic range and high frame rate and virtual reality. So there are many technologies uh, that are coming together to create these new uh, experiences for consumers. But what they all have in common is that we are moving towards a more immersive experience for consumers. It is the ability to create greater emotion and uh, greater engagement by consumers worldwide in their content, whether it be movies or television or virtual reality. So we're having a, an issue with uh, our PowerPoint. So I'm going to talk through the points that I was going to make so that you don't have to, to uh, wait any longer. So our goal is to make uh, interactive and more immersive content. Uh, 3D movies continue to be uh, dominant at the worldwide box office. Uh, when we think of all-time box office hits in 3D, we think of Avatar, Star Wars, Jurassic World, the Avengers from Marvel, and others. So eight of the top ten all-time uh, movie uh, hits at the box office are 3D movies. In 2015, seven of the top 10 movies at the worldwide box office were 3D movies. And so far this year, nine of the top 10 movies at the worldwide box office are 3D movies. And they include Captain America, uh, Zootopia, The Jungle Book, Batman versus Superman, uh, Suicide Squad, X-Men Apocalypse. So 3D movies continue to be extremely popular at the box office. Last year was Hollywood's biggest year yet. It was the most successful year in Hollywood's history as far as successful revenues. And uh, it was uh, the biggest year yet for China with revenues at the box office up 48% here in China. This year, just this last month, China overtook the United States and now has more movie screens in, uh, in China, here in China, than the United States has. So as of right now, there are about 40,000 movie screens here in China, and about 39,000 in uh, the United States. There we go. So we'll go to the next slide here. There we go. And you can see that in 2016, China will have now has more movie screens in this country than we have in the United States. And in 2019, China will overtake the United States as the largest revenue generating box office leader in the world. So right now, China has more movie screens than the United States as of this month. And by 2019, China will generate more revenues at the movies than the United States. So China is going to lead the world uh, in the movie industry. China box office receipts reached record highs last year, and significantly, Chinese-made movies are doing extremely well at the box office. So not only are Hollywood blockbusters doing well in China, but China-made movies uh, represent almost 60% of the box office. So this is a very good sign for the Chinese uh, box office uh, future. China has taken an ownership stake. China Wanda Group has purchased uh, uh, stakes in many of the production companies that make movies that uh, people see all over the world. 
So China has taken an active ownership and co-production role in major companies, including Legendary and Lionsgate in Hollywood. <clears throat> Another trend we want to talk about comes from Chinese director Ang Lee. Ang Lee uh, just released his movie, which is here in Beijing at this time, called Billy Lin's Long Halftime Walk. This movie was shot in 120 frames per second, 4K, and 3D. And as I understand it from our colleagues here, the, the film is so popular in China right now that you cannot get a ticket. Uh, it's very difficult to get a ticket to see Billy Lin uh, at 120 frames per second here in China. Uh, one of our colleagues here today is Dimitri Portelli. He came with me from Los Angeles this week. Dimitri was the uh, stereographer and uh, stereo supervisor for Ang Lee on Billy Lin's Long Halftime Walk. So over the next two days, you're actually going to be able to hear from uh, Dimitri about working with Ang Lee and making this remarkable new movie. I want to talk a bit about high dynamic range and uh, virtual reality. High dynamic range is a a new ability by filmmakers to expand the color gamut, which means that the colors in the motion picture or the television program are richer, brighter, the contrast better. So you get a much improved uh, picture with high dynamic range. Every major broadcaster and studio and production company is working with high dynamic range. Dolby has released uh, many movies now in high dynamic range through its Dolby Vision service. But this is something that will be coming through streaming services, uh, television broadcasters, and all major movies. So again, a higher, more premium way to see a movie with brighter colors and greater contrasts. Every major movie this year is being released in high dynamic range. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about virtual reality. Yep. <coughs> Virtual reality is perhaps the most exciting new technology to come into our world in a generation. Uh, People are excited about it, not just in the movie and entertainment business, but in the medical field, in the real estate field, in the travel field. So virtual reality, we think, is going to change all of our lives over the next uh, 10 years. This is a forecast given to us by British uh, Intelligencer. This is a research firm <clears throat> that forecasts a steady growth of head-mounted displays and virtual reality consoles over the next uh, few years. Uh, the people at Sony PlayStation indicated to us last week in Tokyo that they sold 60,000 uh, new uh, Sony VR systems in their very first week in Japan. Uh, the systems are selling worldwide and they will launch here in China in January. And Sony PlayStation says that China will be the very single biggest market for virtual reality in the world. We asked consumers uh, to tell us what they were excited about uh, VR. And we found that when we asked people in every single age group, uh, there is an excitement about virtual reality. So young people are excited about virtual reality. Uh, women are excited. Uh, parents are excited. Video gamers are excited. So what we're fascinated by is that across all parts of the population, uh, people are quite uh, taken with the potential that VR can make in their lives. We ask people, are you more excited about virtual reality than you were 3D movies and 4K TV? And the answer is yes. People think virtual reality is something much bigger than what 3D or 4K TV uh, presented. So we asked, what, what, what excites you uh, about virtual reality? 
And the number one reason that we heard from people <clears throat> was the virtual reality allows me to travel places I might never get a chance to go to. The second most common uh, answer was that it allows me to enjoy entertainment more deeply. Uh, also, uh, the ability to have superhuman uh, powers, which is something that might come with VR video games. But it's very obvious that people see virtual reality as an uh, opportunity for them to travel the world, do things they otherwise could not do. We asked them, what concerns you about virtual reality? And they said, the cost. We, we are hesitant to uh, pay this uh, a lot of money for a headset and then a computer that runs the headset. The other concern is that the headsets are too bulky. Now we know that the prices are coming down. There will be many Chinese manufacturers who already will have announced plans to produce VR headsets at a much more affordable uh, price. And we know that advanced technology will bring down the bulkiness of the uh, VR headsets. And we hope maybe the VR headset someday will be something that you use your glasses. Every major movie this year in Hollywood will have some sort of VR component, whether it's uh, Star Wars or uh, Marvel movies. So every major movie this coming year will have some sort of VR component. Here is a VR application that was done for a movie this past year. This, uh, this uh, VR experience won our award for the best VR experience last year. This is a, a VR experience that was done for The Walk. And guys, can I play the video? Is that possible, do you think? Okay. We've created a virtual reality experience based on the film The Walk, which is based on the true story of a French acrobat named Philippe Petit, who actually walked about 40 meters across the tightrope between the two towers of the World Trade Center in 1974. What we did is actually recreated that experience in virtual reality, so you get a little bit of the sensation of what it would have been like to actually get out of the wire. I've had people scream bloody murder because they're so scared. And, um, you know, a lot of people just really actually just like to enjoy the view. It really feels like you have a lazy balance. And full <laughs> Bloody good stuff. This was built for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation VR. Oh, wow. <laughs> you can look around and explore the rooftop and actually, you know, interact with it. I yeah. It's really important that you can feel something with your feet. We have a physical wire that you actually step on. It's only about a half an inch tall. It's made of rubber. And then we have a fan to kind of, you know, give you a little breeze. And then when you put the headset on, you forget that you're actually standing on the floor in a theater with a fan and, you know, a rubber rope. You think you're out on top of the World Trade Center and you just feel the breeze and it just becomes a kind of overwhelming thing and you just forget where you are. So they asked me if I would like to try this experience. So they put the headsets on and they said, Jim, walk along the cable. And I could not walk out. Uh, they indicated that about 30%, one out of every three people, will not walk out onto the cable. Because you're looking down and it's, and it's too realistic. So when you have an experience like this, you realize this is not just a, an improvement on a 3D movie. This is not just an improvement. This is a whole new uh, capability that is a, an exciting new way to tell uh, stories and take consumers in 
to places they've, they've never been before. Very exciting. Here are the VR concerns that we have, and that is that most of the VR professionals are working on their very first or their second experience. So we have very inexperienced, we don't know a lot about how to make VR yet. So we need to learn how to make good VR. There will be a lack of content in the year ahead. Our friends at Sony PlayStation last week in Tokyo told us that they will have about 30 VR experiences on the new Sony PlayStation when it's available here in China. But just as with any other medium, when people get their VR headsets, they're going to want to watch a lot of content. And there will be a few games and there will be other kinds of uh, content, but we're going to need you to create a lot of good VR content for this business to be successful. Most smaller companies are indicating that they do not have the financial resources to support the kind of production that they want to do. So we have in the VR space, we have very many small companies that are working on their very first or second VR experience and they need the financial support in order to uh, sustain their ability to create uh, VR in the future. The revenue expectations for VR are quite conservative. Uh, music videos, uh, we think, will be priced at about $2 US, so that you can download a musical artist at a concert or something for $2, that a longer version of five or seven minute VR experience will be about five or six dollars. So we don't know exactly how these uh, experiences are going to be priced, but we expect limited revenues to come in for VR over the first year or two. And then the most significant part of this is that most VR developers have five or fewer employees. So these are very small companies. About 45% of the players that we believe are developing VR are large studios. They would be Shanghai Media Group, they would be CCTV, they would be Disney, Warner Brothers, DreamWorks Animation, Sony Entertainment. So about half of the developers in the marketplace are big companies that have the resources to invest and make great VR. And they understand the entertainment business worldwide. So we're looking for uh, big ideas from the people who make Star Wars, and we're looking for brilliant ideas for young VR creative teams uh, like many of you here in the audience today. So it comes back to what we are doing here is we're creating the next generation of premium, great consumer experiences. And the question is, why is all this focus, whether it's 3D movies or high dynamic range or virtual reality, what is this focus on quality? Why do uh, the major players feel that that's where their efforts need to lie? And the answer is that many of these companies are in the television business. So whether you're CCTV or Shanghai Media Group or in the United States, Discovery Networks or MTV Networks or the major broadcasters, increasingly consumers are streaming their content they are not watching broadcasting in the evening, they're watching their content on their laptop, they're watching it on their iPad, they're watching it on their iPhone. So as viewers tune away from these major television networks, those companies are saying, where do we find the consumers of tomorrow? The major Hollywood studios last year lost $50 billion in their market value because they own cable channels, they own broadcast networks, and they own movie studios. And many of those businesses are in the decline. They're, they're, they're moving into a smaller part of the economic value of the entertainment industry. So these companies are very focused on creating the next products that will create the next revenue streams uh, for their businesses. The one thing that the Sony PlayStation people told us last week in Tokyo was that Sony itself cannot create a virtual reality industry. 
Oculus by itself cannot create a virtual reality business. So what they are all saying is that we all have to work together in order to create enough content and excite and delight consumers uh, over the next few years. But this could be the next huge shift in the way we consume our content. I want to close by saying I've had a chance to meet many of the speakers who will be with you today and tomorrow. And I know that they are considered by their colleagues in the United States and in Europe as the absolute best experts uh, available anywhere in the world. And the fact that they've all come to Beijing to be speaking and meeting with you and building friendships with you is a great compliment to how highly we regard the Beijing Film Academy, the AIS China, and all of you. Thank you very much for your attention.